Hey, right. call to order the regular meeting of the Board of Commissioners, December 18th. Roll call, Jillian. Commissioner Ernst? Here. Commissioner Engel? Commissioner Rollins? Commissioner Vogelsang? Commissioner Wright? Here. Are there any changes to the agenda? Nope. Uh, so we'll move on to public requests. No. Eight five three five one Northwest Third Terrace. Uh, thank you, commissioners. Uh, I want to thank you especially for the proposal for the proposed uh, resolution that you uh, have drafted, and I uh, think that it's very well drafted. Thank you, uh, Brianne. I think that uh, hopefully it will draw some attention to the public safety. And you may or may not be aware, but I believe a Hidden Valley last weekend uh, there might have been another train car accident. So it's uh, obviously a serious problem and a serious uh, threat to public safety, which is what we want to try to eliminate with the extension. Also, uh, in discussion with some of my neighbors regarding your CRA issue, uh, a lot of people have said, uh, why would you write a check to the CRA at all uh, since they haven't complied with the uh, with their part of the whole uh, the whole agreement? It's like if someone were to agree to mow your lawn and they don't mow your lawn, you're not going to give them a check. Uh, I would think that if you just wrote them a nice letter from your attorney stating that until they give you the uh, uh, evidence under the agreement that then uh, put the onus on them so you don't have to uh, spend $5,000 for their uh, public records request. And lastly, I want to wish you all happy holidays and Merry Christmas. And uh, again, thank you for your cooperation and uh, saving green space and recreational facilities in our city. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Harold Chaffee. I'm the president of, P of Keep Golf and Boca, 6200 Northwest 2nd Avenue. Uh, I have to concur with Robert. Uh, you know, we went to the uh, city council meeting. We were, we were welcomed with open arms, of course. And they uh, they more or less had just pushed it back onto you. They said, well, it's your responsibility to make sure everybody's safe, which is kind of really backwards. That's why this this uh, this notice to them has to be done. You know, we're trying our best to basically talk to the city and other people to basically to stop it because it's uh, just going to create quite a havoc there and destroy a park. And um, yeah, it, and everything else, you know, it, it's, um, I just want to wish you a uh, Jesus green, happy new year, Merry Christmas and everything else. All right. And thank you very much for everything that you do. Really. Anyone else? Public request? Hi, Sil Celebrity. Uh, 6200 Northwest 2nd Avenue, Boca Raton, Florida. I'm not sure if the council, uh, if the commissioners, I mean, know just how awesome the word was when you came up with the 18 covered courts. I mean, it spread like wildfire as well as when you were thinking of not doing it. Um, I just wanted to emphasize that we all know how many, many, many rainstorms there are all over the place, uh, you know, all times of the year, unless it's a hurricane, they wash out the courts and 18 courts. You're going to draw from all over the place, from all the courts, from everywhere. Those courts will always be busy between between that and the seniors that God bless you between that and the seniors that want to get out of the sun. Um, I just think it's going to be a, a win, win, win. It will not take from. Boca Paddle Club, if that's anyone's concern, because indoor pickleball, it's kind of like a different game for you those that do not play it. Um, sure, he that, that they're going to have a few courts, and I know um, Craig was saying, uh, well, we hope that some of them are covered, and but to have 18, you're also going to be uh, catering to possible tournaments, uh, uh, I spoke to Carl Foster today, and he was telling me how, 
you know, the Boca Masters. It, it'll prevent them most likely to try to find another home. It, it'll also guarantee that the games will get in. And uh, as well as uh, he's, I know he's possibly looking for a place for his, uh, his, his team, the Boca Picklers. And besides that, I just want to know, like, there's no one else that has that. Diadem has an indoor court. It's not in Boca, but an outdoor court that's shaded that can accompany more than just like three or four groups of people. It, it's just awesome. And I'm really hoping that you guys put it through. I don't know if you realize how awesome it is, but it's pretty blank and awesome. Thanks. Thank you. Anybody else? Go ahead. Hello, my name is Douglas Heiser. I'm representing the Rotary International and the Rotary Clubs in Boca Raton area. And thank you very much for you all to make uh, a park with a seat in the middle. <laughs> this is great for us. And then I come in here to talk about, thank you, Brian and uh, Brian to invite me here. I'm coming here to talk about the Peace Pole. And we want to propose the city and the Parks and Recreation to have a Peace Pole. Initially, the idea is to have one installed at Sugar Sand Park. When Rotary joined with the Park and Recreation years ago to build the carousel over there. And, but just to let you all know, you have peace poles that can be installed in every single park in the city if you guys want. This is a way to spread the word and try to motivate peace, people to, to look for peace at those days. And I'm available for if you guys have any questions. We're going to donate the Peace Pole. I just need to figure out with the Parks and Recreation how to install them. And you can, as you can see, it's very simple. You are installing like 30 Peace Poles between Boca and Titesville and Okeechobee, Boca, Okeechobee and Titesville. And I hope you can have one or more here in Boca Raton. Okay, thank you very much. Did anybody have any questions? What what exactly is the peace pole? Is it, is it encouraging a rally, or what? What are, what are we uh, doing? With they, the, they have a simple the... phrase: "May peace prevail in in art in eight different languages." That's it. Okay. It's just a a a a a poll to make people think about peace, and just to try to motivate people to think about that. Is it the different languages? Is because. Every city, every community have people with different languages around. For example, my accent's not for Oklahoma, I'm from Brazil. <laughs> so, and you, you have people you have you're going to have in Boca, you want to have in Ebro, in Spanish, Portuguese, English, French, because I don't know if you guys noticed that they have a lot of Canadian coming once in a while. <laughs> and <laughs> this is the idea, just to spread the peace. And how many um, is it? I assume it's sponsored by Rotary. Yes. Internationally. Yes. And yes. How many are already up? Oh. <laughs> uh... I know how many you have in my district at this point. You're going to get close by the end of my term is in June, around 200 piece posts. In yeah. a, around the world or in... no? Only between Boca, Okeechobee, and Knightsville, okay. but around the world you have. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. This is an initiative that Rotary have to sp spread the word around. Yeah. And you have in Wellington, Delray, they're going to have the second one in Delray, going to have one in Boynton, and Bell Glades, and, and the Okeechobee, and, and then I hope you can have in Boca as well. Yeah. I, I, to me, I think it's a good idea. It's a matter of coordination with the city. And what park is the right one, or is it our park, or is it? Yeah, specifically for Sugar Sand and another park that was in the city. So the city sent them to us for this for Sugar Sand, of course. Sugar that's Sand our park. first. So if if the board wants to move forward, we can certainly talk to his group and find out where they want to go and talk to city staff about location at the park and move from there. I think your plan was to have it in January. Yes, and uh, for the first time ever, you're going to host the the visit of the Rotary International President. They're going to come into Boca, and then they're going to visit the, the, the Sugar Sand Park as a, in the program. And then we wish you can have this installed before January 14. 
is a pretty easy thing. It's not the the is it just <laughs> Hang the thing over there. I can do it myself. <laughs> as long as we don't need a permit. Yeah, yeah. You need to see about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you if you need a permit, permit maybe in the next we'll present who's coming in a hundred years from now. Just kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'd like I'd like to see one at Ocean Strand that people can see from the sidewalk. I think that would be a good idea. Um, it's a new park, and the more peace that I can have expect, another one for there as well. To have true that would be three. Great. How many? I think that would be fantastic. Yeah, we at this point and the county is going to install one at Veteran Parks. The city going to start one at Sunborn Square, and then I can give for you as many you want. Okay. And then the other thing is the Rotary Clubs by themselves going to help them man to maintain this. Okay. And clean up, put flowers around, and have an event over there you're going to do. Can you imagine how impactful it would be for Boca if the Rotary International President coming to dedicate like four, five, six peace posts in Boca Raton? These are going to be huge. And then I can install all of them. Just let me know. That'd be <laughs> More peace, less hate, right? Yes, so. exactly. Peace pole doesn't have to be all white. It can be different colors, different things. Yeah, the like one that you, you, yeah, you can have it in different colors. The one that you bought is this one, exactly this one. This is a PVC pole. Right. Okay. And the, the all the people doing, they put like a five by five wood inside, something like that. And then they just yeah. install them. Yes, but if you, for example, if you want, oh, Doug, can you have one colorful for me to put in some place else? I can order. I don't know how long it's going to take it. But those ones are already being delivered because everybody's going to install at the same time. But the answer is yes. Yeah, I guess my initial thought was, is what's wrong with it? Is it going to cause us a problem somewhere, somewhere down the road? But, you know, just a quick scan. This is the first I heard of it. Um, a quick scan of the internet is very well recognized. And it's, yeah. very, it's it's everything you say it is and more. So I don't know if you need a motion to make one of these things or how are you going to? Yeah, yeah. Well, just to let's share with you what they're going to do in Pahoki. Yeah, just to share with you guys what they're going to do in Pahoki. They have a trail inside the new park and then they're going to have the Peace Pole in different places and they, they, they we're going to donate the Peace Pole, but they're going to have bench around the Peace Pole for people sitting and look at, and uh, it's, it's each one doing the different things, okay? Yeah, yeah. I, I could, one thing I guess I would add is that it's only four sides to that pole that does that cover all the languages we have in our area. It would be nice if it had you do more than one because yeah. some of them are multicolored different things. But if you look, if you if you look on if you look online, they have a peaceful park. They have like three, four, five of these in the same place with different language. We can do it. Okay. Well, we'll have discussions. Okay. Okay. Good. Yeah. Thank awesome. you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Okay. Any more public? Go ahead. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Tobias Kay, and I reside at 6327 Northwest 24th Street in Boca. Uh, I previously addressed this commission with the health and wellness benefits of expanding pickleball facilities. Uh, today, in light of concerns that have been raised about shelving the project, I would like to quickly address uh, the urgent need for proceeding with the planned project at Patch Reef. Uh, at the current rate of growth of pickleball demand in and around the city, it is clear to us that demand will exceed and outpace the combined courts of both Patch Reef, Ocean Breeze, and other projects within two years. It would be a mistake to underestimate the rate of growth in demand, just as it was a mistake to only build six courts at Patch Reef or four courts at El Rio. Uh, in the first place. 
Uh, secondly, there is a firmly justified need for covered courts, given the dramatically hotter weather that we are experiencing here in South Florida. Uh, a cursory inspection of outdoor facilities this summer indicates that most facilities are empty after 10 a.m. This deprives the public of court time and diminishes the value of your investment. The economics and return on investment of a covered facility makes great sense. You can conservatively expect three times the utilization of the same courts that you would with an uncovered court. This will allow for training, lessons, and even tournaments. Hatch Reef will remain a public facility that will cater to the needs of residents of any means. The same cannot be said of a private facility which may promise the moon, but yet to demonstrate what the price of admission will be, nor for that matter, membership requirements. And as a perfect example, Diadem and Coconut Creek, very nice facility, but membership is $1,500 per year. The Beach and Parks District has already drawn up a bold and effective plan that addresses these issues. The infrastructure at Patch Reef already exists to efficiently handle the demand. Funds have already been allocated. And as I understand, the bids have come in under budget. On behalf of literally thousands of local pickleball players, we ask that you promptly proceed with what is already an excellent plan for the further development of Patrick Park. Thank you. Anybody else? Hi, I'm John Holloway. I am the president and CEO of the Coastal Stewards. Uh, formerly the Friends of Gumbo Limbo Nature Center. Um, I currently reside at uh, 2519 North Ocean Boulevard out on A1A, and our office is at 5301 North Federal Highway in Boca Raton, at least for a couple more days. Um, I am here this evening because I owe you, as I kept my word, that I would come back and give you updates on where we're at, how we're doing. Um, not good. We are not doing very well. I am not a harbinger of bad things, but I want to let you know that our nonprofit is struggling right now. Um, unfortunately, the situation where we entered into our agreement with the city of Boca Raton to take over the responsibility for the management of sea turtle rehab at the Gumbo Limbo Nature Center, that came with a lot of challenges. Some of that played out into the public, some of that played out in the media, everybody's gonna have an opinion and change is hard. But some realities and some real numbers, as I know Craig likes to have real numbers in front of him. Door donations for our organization, we lost the door donations to the city of Boca Raton in January of 2023. Um, since door donations had been collected over the last 30 years at the facility, those were always collected by the nonprofit and those were immediately brought back into our budget to spend at the facility. As of January 1st, the city of Boca Raton took those door donations. Once we lost those donations, that, that accounted for $253,000 against what we typically budgeted for. Counting on those, I will tell you in a high year, we were getting over 350. In 2019, we had about $350,000 in door donations. Um, it's been not such a great year for visitation at the Nature Center, so we, we know that in last year, we would have been down year to date in November, 253. Uh, designated, designated donations from folks coming to see the patients and wanting to give money to help with their recovery, we're down $50,000 because there's no patients. And then finally, one of our hallmarks and what we're very proud of is the gift store, which is a sustainable program that we only sell local artists recyclable goods. We don't sell anything from outside of the United States. All of our packaging is all environmentally friendly. Our Jean, our manager, has she moved out all plastics. Our, our gift store sales this year, year to date for November, we're down 177,000. So in total this year, just to get us to November, we are down $481,000 in what was typical revenue generated at the Gumbo Limbo Nature Center. 
and contributed to our work that immediately went back to the Nature Center. Um, I can tell you that the visitation numbers are down more than 30%. I can't speak to the city staff that keep those numbers, but I can tell you my people that work there every day are approximating more than 30% reduction from last year, year to date for visitation. Um, we are currently now facing renovations there where building one, where the Nature Center gift store is located. That's now all been shut down. Uh, bathrooms have been moved outside. Parking has been eliminated and we are barely seeing one or two people coming through the door in a day. So we are facing some tough choices in the feasibility of operating a gift store there anymore. Um, the additional piece, and I, I want to keep it higher level, but the additional piece is the, it is the cost that we've had to face in hiring credible credentialed staff for us to get the permit to do the sea turtle work. Um, the past is in the past. I can tell you that it costs money if you want to have people with good credentials, good academic records, verifiable degrees that, that say they can work with these animals. That costs money, and it costs a lot of money. So we're, we're talking another sizable hit that we took all at once in this past year to hire those people. Because keep in mind, you have to have them on staff before you can solicit the state to get a permit. So whether we had sea turtle patients or not, I've had to have that full complement of staff ready to go. Um, we have we have submitted everything, folks. I, I, that's why I'm here tonight, timely. Everything has been sent in as of a week ago with FWC and the permitting. We can do nothing else. We've done everything triple to make sure that we're up to the standards that FWC seems to be referring to. I'm optimistic, but I can tell you that we don't feel comfortable in planning for turtles to return until at least April. That's well over a year since the turtles left. Um, and what we do is work with the animals. Um, so I owed you that. Steve, you, uh, you had Ted said to me before, please always keep us up to date. This is the up to date. The permits are in. Hopefully we will get them and we will start doing the sea turtle rehab. We are not going to keep and we're not going to have the permits for the resident turtles. We have two turtles that have lived there for a long time. The state ruled that because we did not have, and I'll get the quote right, unfettered control of the Gumbo Limbo Nature Center and control of all of the facilities, we could not, can, we could not assure the health of the two resident turtles, so we were denied. Unless we wanted the city of Boca Raton to give the nonprofit unfettered control of the nature center to which I didn't even ask because I don't want unfettered control of that nature center. Um, so those are some of our challenges. I am excited to tell you, cause I am going to end on a high note because if it was all gloom and doom, I wouldn't be here anymore. The great thing is we have shifted and we have pivoted to where the needs are. We have a youth council. The youth council regularly gets together and it's going to amplify with more time the youth council tells us what we need to be doing. They actually sat down in a strategic plan and we had middle schoolers sit with our board of directors to decide the future. Um, that was a little jarring for some, but it went very, very well. And what that has produced is that the coastal stewards are now gonna be focusing on manatees, sea turtles, and dolphins and beak whales. Um, those are three megafauna in our community that are, that are in peril. Um, they are all in crisis and I have hired the staff now. I think you would be proud of us. Our staff is world renowned in those three megafauna. We could have never had that opportunity before, but Dr. Shelby Luce, who leads our marine life conservation team is world renowned. And I can tell you that they've had three dead whales in the last six months between the keys and here. And she's, we get the call now. Can you come help us and help the state identify what happened? Um, that's a pretty awesome thing. Uh, we've established some great partnerships, Manatee Lagoon. In fact, on Thursday evening, we're having a celebration at Manatee Lagoon. It's called our Winter Wishes. Uh, we were planning on hopefully getting 50 people there. We're at 200 people. Um, the West Palm community, the community of Boynton Beach, the community of Delray has all stepped up tremendously and are all excited about the work that we're going to be doing. Um, so things are going really well for us. Unfortunately, not all so well at our original home that we founded. Um, so we'll remain hopeful and hope that it gets better. 
we, we are still committed to having the sea turtles there. Craig, you asked me a while ago, was it our intention to leave? It's never been our intention to leave. We know and we value taking care of injured sea turtles in South County at the Gumbo Limbo Nature Center. It's been our commitment for more than 15 years. We're doing the best we can to make sure that we can still do that. Um, but there are a number of challenges. So other than that, happy holidays. We're still giving it our best. I'm proud of our team. Anytime you need anything, please don't hesitate. And finally, last thing, I wanna compliment publicly Brianne Harms. We have not always in the last four years agreed on everything. By far, that is the truth. We do not always agree, but we have always met each other respectfully, honestly, and what I would say in a trusted voice. And I couldn't ask for a better collaborator and a better thought partner. And you all, she does an honor to the organization. And I don't have to say that because we're not doing a lot down here anymore. But I want you all to know how much she has benefited our organization and the trajectory that we have. So thank you all very much. Sure for you. So where is your relationship at with the city at this point? We still have the agreement that was signed in April that says that we are entitled to operate a gift store in that square footage in building one. It also entitled us to some office space that we do not have because of the construction. So we lost office space. We do have the footprint in Sea Turtle Rehab, which is downstairs, every, the, the familiar area. We still have that footprint. Uh, it would be our intention that we have Sea Turtle patients there. And, and also that we would start doing some propagation of seagrasses and teach kids about the propagation and, and the regeneration of the seagrass beds in the south intercoastal that is damaged. So we're okay as far as a relationship, but that's about it. I mean, staff, your staff obviously has to interact with city staff. Is that something that's been worked out as well. I mean, in terms of interacting in the same, but your staff is not actually on site yet anyway, correct? We have not, other than our gift store, our retail ambassadors, mm -hmm. the rest of my team, because they've got all of these credentials and we haven't had anything for them to do, mm -hmm. we're still doing sea turtle rehab. Dr. Shelby Luce is doing at least 24 hours of surgery a week up at Loggerhead we pay for her to be up there doing turtle. We're still doing turtles. We're doing more turtles than we ever have done in surgeries. We're just not doing it at the nature center right now. Um, Kara is working, learning and doing more with rescues. She was welcomed by Miami. So she's down with Miami Dade, working with them on a daily basis, working their beaches. So we're having great success with new collaborative partners. Thanks. Any further um, public requests? Do we have anybody on? I keep forgetting. <laughs> Stop asking. Um, okay, we'll close public requests. I do approval of the minutes of the previous board meeting held on December 4th. Move to approve. Okay, moving on to regular business, uh, Sugar Sand Park roof change order. Sure, on page five of your agenda packets is a change order in the amount of $116,090.21. Um, I think I've talked to all of you. Um, uh, some of you have walked me back down from my heightened state over the roof at Sugar Sand Park. So I appreciate that. This is the change order to repair what happened at the Explorium. Basically, when the Explorium was built, the as built called for plywood. But in the 1995-96 era, they used OSB board, and um, so the asbolts had the had the um, what we thought was plywood in there. It was not plywood. So in order, so when they started putting in the new roof, the screws were penetrating the ceiling of the science center. If we want to fix that because it looks really bad, um, this is the cost to fix it. We have fifty thousand in contingency money, so this would increase the contract price by sixty-six thousand ninety dollars and twenty-one cents. So just looking tonight for approval for this so we can finish the that roof over there. They'll take out what they put in, fix the uh, the panels that they had drilled through, and then um, 
remove the OS board, put the plywood in, and make the roof the way it should be. So just looking for approval tonight of this change order. As concerned um, about the appearance as I am about the, the function of those screws coming through the, uh, the ceiling. They and won't be anymore. So that that was a, a big concern. I went over and looked at it, and it's it doesn't it doesn't look good. But um, I, I'm just really concerned about the functionality. I I did have the city engineer walk through it, and they said structurally it it passes, everything's fine. It's just aesthetically, do we want these large screws sticking through the ceiling, where you have exhibits that draw your eyes up and um, things like that? So I recommend we approve this tonight so we can get it fixed. Anybody else with questions or comments? Anybody with a <laughs> yes, please. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, Madam Chair, I would uh, like to make the motion that we approve the work order to what was the total amount? Uh, one hundred sixteen thousand ninety cents, ninety dollars and twenty one cents. To a total of one hundred sixteen thousand and ninety dollars and twenty one cents to make the repairs at uh, Sugar Sand Community Center. Second. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Okay, um, number two, the resolution, Jeffrey Street Extension. Um, go ahead. May I just, just for the record, you know, the board does not often consider resolutions, but as part of that process, I'd like to read the title of the resolution into the record. Uh, for the record, it's resolution number 2024-01, a resolution of the Board of Commissioners of the Greater Boca Raton Beach and Park District, opposing any extension of Jeffrey Street through North Park affirming the district's commitment to exploring alternative solutions which prioritize safety, accessibility, and the recreational value of North Park, providing for de distribution, providing for conflicts, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. It's on the table for your consideration, Madam Chair. Okay. okay, so uh, some discussion on this, anybody? With the resolution, number 2024-01. Second. Okay, a little bit of discussion. Hold on. Um, after after reading this, I I just think for me, I'm not I'm just not sure the point of the resolution when we could just send an email, um, voicing our concerns about because our responsibility is the park and the safety of the park, theirs is just the easement. So, I just don't want to irritate anybody by doing this resolution and and cause more additional problems. But I do want to voice our concerns about the safety. Um, so I'm just not sure if this is the right thing to do. Um, I, I think we need to say something, for lack of a better phrase, something official. Um, we bent over backwards to play nice with the city. And um, that effort, in my view, has not been reciprocated. I know uh, when I was reelected to, to the term in which I'm serving, I made a commitment that I would try to see things from their point of view um, in the hope that the, same, the city would do the same. But I, I just don't see it. And, and this is also a matter of safety for the community. Uh, and it's a matter that the city seems to, I don't know if not prioritize is the right phrase, but they're not giving it the importance that it, uh, that it needs. So I think, you know, we can send them an email. Uh, what would happen with that email? Who knows? They'll look at it. Will they act on it? Here's something that says, well, listen, this is how we feel. This is why we feel this way. And we really need for you guys to take another look at this. You know, uh, at this point, irritating them anymore. Uh, I think, quite frankly, they're permanently irritated by us. Um, and there's little, if anything, that we can do to change that. I would love to change it, but I don't think uh, 
sending them an email for, to voice our concerns would, would change anything, would make them feel any better about us. I think this, this is the way that we need to go. Madam Chair, I, I, I read the resolution and um, I can't support the resolution for a couple of reasons. I do understand the irritation part of it. Um, and I understand your point, Steve. Taking a bigger picture view of the whole thing is what we've missed with the city over the past few years is communication. And this is just another um, point of the missing link of communication to find out that, you know, plans already drafted, plans already sent in. And so I probably was spurred by the moment last meeting to say, yeah, go ahead and write a resolution. Out of the frustration of dealing with um, a staff that would have been much easier to just communicate directly with us that this is their intent. I think we all thought they were doing it, but no one knew it until someone went to the authority that gave us the, the filing. So communication uh, with a partner who is receiving the largest sum of money has is, is been more than disappointing. Um, and I think it could be far better for all of us, but it shouldn't rush us into making a decision that is, um, you know, it, we talk about public safety. This is a park, okay? So what happens if you don't put the extension in? We, they, they say, don't put it in there. What happens to the people on the other side of the railroad track when they try to cross over the railroad track just to come to a park? I think you have, a, a, overall, the city has said very affirmatively that they need an east-west corridor in the north end of town, and that's not, that's just a, that is a public safety issue for fire, for police, everything. And it has to be that the railroad tracks cut across the middle of Boca. And if a long train comes through there, we're all stuck on the east side or the west side, but they're always conscious of how they allocate resources. And the allocation of resources for public safety, which is what we're, we live in Boca for, um, I think they felt would be far stronger with access to an east-west corridor, and this happens to be it. And it's unfortunate, but this is where it has to be. And so in their mind, these plans were probably drafted many years ago and always in the mindset to happen. And it's a very incomplete structure. If you drive down Clintmore and you hit Jeffrey, it's like, well, how come it stops there? You know, it really should cut across. It's always been left open for the easement to go over. This city is far bigger than it was, you know, four years ago, eight years ago, 15 years ago. So that corridor, in my mind, is probably a very necessary public safety thing. They've made that decision. They just didn't communicate it well to us. So combined with two things, one, general good of the city that they need this corridor, okay. Sure would have been nice to let us know more, be on board with what they're doing. But I think for the residents at Boca Tica, um, I understand the concerns, Mr. Decate, of your home is directly affected by more traffic going across there. But I also have to say, what about the people on the other side of the railroad tracks? They can't get to that park at all. And if they do, they're going to be walking across a track with you know, a railroad track. There's a big public safety risk with that. Are we going to put a, what's going to happen? So at the end of the day, this is a city project that they need to work on. And we need to step back from it and let it move forward uh, on their pace. And they should be meeting with the public and they should be doing more with us as a community and saying, this is where we think and why we think this should happen. So that's my two cents, but I cannot support the resolution as it is. Okay. And, and I, I agree with you, what you said. And I think that um, the, with the new city manager coming on board January 1st, right? Um, and Brianne will be meeting with him next week on a number of topics. So I think maybe the communication might open up a little bit um, just based on that, hopefully. Um, and I, I agree with everything that you said. Um, so I can't support this resolution either. So um, Bob, go ahead. I'm gonna add to Craig's two cents with my three cents. Um, I'm the one that proposed the, uh, the resolution. The, the city has known full well uh, of our objections to that crossing. Uh, the safety issue has, you know, come up uh, because of uh, Mr. Kate's uh, observation, at which he stated uh, in, in previous meetings about the safety issue. Um, 
and uh, as far as the folks on the other side of the tracks, I'm sorry that that's the situation, but you know, it's been that way since I moved here in 77, it hasn't, that hasn't changed. Um, uh, and I know Yamato is a busy roadway, but I can't imagine a four lane highway, which is what we're looking at crossing over there. And I know there's going to be some eminent domain that's going to have to take place in order to make that reach federal highway and probably take out uh, our favorite uh, uh, refreshment, uh, the duck, uh, in the process. Um, uh, but it, it's it's not that the city's un been unaware. They have been. Uh, maybe their, their communication with us has not been uh, good, but I, I would say to the contrary because they've have repeatedly told us that they were going to put that road through. That wasn't, uh, and uh, it, it just occurred to uh, to me in listening to the, the comments about the safety issue that you know, there is a safety issue. Not only that, but when you're going to open up this to uh, um, a major four-lane highway going through the middle of a park. Our park is going to be bifurcated with a busy highway. And if you've been down uh, Flintmore, even when it's not, uh, opened up, it's still a busy highway. Um, I'm I'm going to continue to support the motion, and I, I I would hope that the resolution would not would reach not only the city, but those uh, uh, entities who are considering uh, the the petition by the city to open up this uh, this this corridor. So, uh, and and I think that um, you know, while uh, some points uh, that uh, Craig made uh, may be applicable. I just think that the safety issue is the overriding factor for me in, in, in this resolution, so. Point though that Delray does have a railroad crossing on Atlantic Avenue. And there are trains that come through there all the time. Um, and there doesn't seem to be any safety issues glaring that I know of uh, there. Um, so I think there are ways to make it a safe place to have a railroad crossing on on the railroad side and on the park side. Um, and I think it's gonna happen one way or the other if the city gets to go ahead to do it, so. Um. At a resolution here. Uh, and do I think this resolution is going to uh, make a difference to the city? Probably not. They'll probably get the same kind of response that was it Mr. Decate got when he uh, talked to them or Harold, I forget which. Um, and uh, you know, it's, it's, it's probably going to happen, but I, I would feel more comfortable saying to the people who put me in office, yeah, I, I agree, after we've had uh, several uh, incidents here with a bright line, uh, that, uh, you know, it, it's, it's new, it's going to take getting used to, and there's going to be some fatalities there. And by the fact that people are coming into our park, I, I don't know what kind of security they're going to have to prevent people from crossing the tracks uh, as a pedestrian. But uh, I think it's uh, it's going to be a dangerous intersection uh, at, at that uh, that uh, rail crossing. See everyone's point, but the people who have come to us and said number one priority for your park is safety, um, we have to go on the record with the city saying that we're concerned about the safety of the community and. For them to to come back and say, "Well, that's on you," you know, you have to figure out how you're going to keep the people who are visiting your park safe. Well, if we don't have the railroad crossing, or if, if they at least know the word's already out that we want to at least make our position known, um, I just think that we need to have something out there so that the community knows that we're concerned about their safety. difference of opinions and the the resolution as it was written um kind of states that you all would not agree with the crossing but maybe you guys are okay with the crossing as long as safety is covered so there is i mean i could rewrite this and bring it back to where it's a little less um we oppose what you're doing because it's going to happen like aaron said um but we are adamant about the, about the safety if you if if that would be agreeable to everybody i could certainly rewrite it to be less opposition but more about the safety concerns I don't know, just throwing that out there to make a... Especially after you meet with the new city manager, that um, could be, you know, something for something in January that we could um, 
address after we hear what the city manager has to say about what steps the city wants to take as far as making that crossing safe and um, keeping the people in the park and the community safe. The, the real way to ensure safety and at the same time allow for through traffic on Jeffrey Street, build a railroad overpass, make the highway two lanes, not four, and make and put in a 30 mile an hour speed limit. Uh, there, the one thing that has, has struck me in light of the bright line accidents is there's not a single rail overpass or rail cut in Palm Beach County. Everything is a grade crossing. And we're at the point now, and I'm just going to talk about Boca because that's our, that's our bailiwick. We're at the point now, and this has happened to me where if a, a hundred car freight train gets stuck, you, you're at risk of blocking multiple grade crossings. And God forbid if we're, uh, we're in the middle of evacuating for a hurricane and a freight train gets stuck, those people are screwed. All right, there is no east-west through crossing in the entire city. So here's an opportunity for the city of Boca Raton to figure out how to do it and build a rail overpass at Jeffrey Street with sidewalks. Make it two lanes, make the highway speed limit, maybe even 25 miles an hour. Okay, and that addresses the safety issue. It also addresses the issue of if a freight train gets stuck, how you get a fire, a, a, a fire truck or police cruisers through. There's just, God forbid, uh, we have a problem where all the, the gates go down due to a malfunction. We've got no way to connect the east side of the city with the west side. And all those people on the east side of the city are in trouble. So that's my nickel. Uh, your two cents and your three. Um, may I suggest that in light of um, Brianne's upcoming meeting this week, that we just kind of defer it until January. And from that standpoint, if we still as a group feel strongly enough about it, um, we make we soften it in some ways about the safety part of it. <laughs> Um, but it gives us a little bit more. We, we've, we've talked about it. We've addressed the issue. Um, but we don't have to act on it tonight. Is it going to change anything if we wait until the next meeting? Is all I'm asking. I say we, we let Brian have her, her meeting with George and, and get some additional information. Um, and then we can have individual conversations with her um, and then go from there. Is that okay with everybody? Have a motion. There's a motion on the floor. So, I'll have a motion. Sure. Second. I join. Motion to defer. That was the original motion to go. Okay, moving on to Patrick Park Tennis Pickleball Project. There's on page nine. Uh, we did get two bids back for the pickleball project. We've broken those down um, in your agenda packets. I have to correct on my memo on page nine. I wrote that the total for the contract that I was, as I was recommending it, would be um, $8,705,360. It would actually be $8,692,529. Um, on page nine of your agenda packet. Yes, yeah, sorry. I, I put down 8705 um, 360 I have no idea how I got to that, but it should be 8692529 um, This project includes the reconstruction of all the tennis courts. I know there's been some questions about whether or not we need that. That was based on that GeoCentech report that was done in 2019. Um, certainly uh, able to change that. Now, the tennis component of the bid combines the um, drainage. So if you did opt to just do the pickleball courts, the drainage and the parking, 
that would be 7,216,382. So I'm just looking. Yeah, so it would be with the tennis includes, the tennis reconstruction component includes the drainage repairs, and those really need to get done for sure. Um, so that takes 125,000 out of that. So you would add the 125, um, you would subtract the 1.6 million and then add 125 back in. So you get to 7,216,382 is then if you don't want to do the tennis reconstruction right now. Um, so that, yes. So Sorry. can I make a motion to, and I'll give the thought logic for it, for um, 7,216,382 for the Pickleball Center drainage and parking. If I can have a second for that, then I'll give you more. Uh, well, before I, you need a second, and then, okay, I'll second the motion. Discussion? Okay. Um, it was my impression that uh, we're only putting off uh, converting back to tennis courts pending uh, what we see as the result of just using uh, the courts that we have in place now to see what the impact is on, am I correct? Yeah, that was for that portion of it, yes. We would recommend leaving the 12 that you're that you're converting out there now, um, build the 18, see how the 18 and 12 are utilized. If we feel like the tennis, if we need to replace those back with tennis or you know, pickleball 2.0 comes out and we need space for that, we could use those courts for that too. So um, the thought was not to do those. Uh, the tennis reconstruction is separate. That's all the tennis courts getting rebuilt. Um, including the, the 12 pickleball courts. So that was where the 1.6 million comes into. If we wanted to not do that, and I know Commissioner Ernst has some thoughts on it, um, we can do that as needed per court. We can, um, and just bid them as they go. That was recommended by Geosyntec a while ago, um, back when we had resurfacing done. So there's been sa some safety concerns, but I know um, overall, if we're looking to reduce it, that's where you could do it. I guess I need to ask Craig, what's the, the, the reason for holding back uh, uh, the other? So, so here, here's kind of the thought logic on it is, first of all, I am not the tennis player who is out there on a regular basis, but I do know people who are out there and I talk to them about the drainage and what's going on out there. Clearly two of the North courts probably do have a problem with uh, drainage, court 16, court maybe court 12. Um, that's that's what's identified in that geos Sentec report. It didn't say replace everything. So when we replace everything, you're talking about taking down all the chain link fences, all of everything, and starting over. That's a big endeavor. Okay, while you're doing the pickleball center. So wouldn't it make more sense to just build out the pickleball center? Okay, fix it, some of the minor drainage things. This has already gone on for five years and it hasn't been horrible. So Focus on building the pickleball center first and the parking lot. Do some repairs to the drainage. Then come back, reassess the whole tennis center. And if you're going to tear it down, wouldn't it be better to have clay courts? I mean, really can reconsider what we're doing over in that center with more thought logic than just re tear it all down, re repair and replace. And then you have kind of a staging part. You still keep what you have. That can still operate while we're building this new pickleball center. When we're done with the new pickleball center, we come back and we reassess the whole thing over there at the tennis center to say, does it make sense? But right now to say, we're gonna do everything all at once. I think that's just uh, an awful lot. And it's a lot of money too. And that the cost benefit isn't really worth it. If you, if you say, look, we just have to repair two tennis courts, they're about 50,000 each, that's $100,000. Um, I'd rather spend the money on fixing the drainage, making some minor repairs in the tennis center and, banking that because trust me we need this money to spend on north park um whether we can put that towards a field house whether wherever that is we all know a field house is a priority and i think that will come up will give us more flexibility for the budget upcoming in the next year so that's the thought logic it, it, you know this um I didn't realize that the fences were going to be involved in this uh, process. And you can you not do the 
the building without, I mean, the repairs or the renovation without removing the fences? Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you know, the, um, and timing, of course, is everything. Um, you don't want to have everything taken down at the same time. Uh, but the the tennis courts are well past their prime, and we 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 postponed uh, uh, this time and time again of doing the renovations. And um, I, and I know from the standpoint of uh, the hard courts is that there's are uh, there is a segment of the community that likes playing on the hard courts, mostly the younger uh, folks uh, like playing on the hard courts. I when I was playing tennis, I played on the hard courts, um, but at I still, uh, you know, enjoy the, you know, the, the easiness uh, as I got older with clay because it's easier on the back and the knees. Um, the uh, the other other uh, issue. I mean, Craig's got the motion uh, to uh, with the um, the covered pickleball courts, and I I, I just want to go over some history. Uh, the, we've been talking about a field house for a very long time, and. I brought it up at the last meeting about having a, a field house, uh, perhaps in, even in lieu of the covered uh, pickleball courts, only because it gives uh, other recreational programming uh, an opportunity. With, with um, Sugar Sand Park right now, uh, that you can hardly get space over there. Uh, if you wanted to uh, um, go uh, work out with your with your kids or something and when it's raining there, there's no way you can get space between you got behind you got judo you got uh, futsal uh, uh, you got basketball um, and <clears throat> the concern I have too with uh, um, right now we have uh, what six courts at uh, Patchery that are lit for a pickleball we have uh, we're planning so that's 12. Um, I, I know that we would be able to, and looking at the, the activity, I know that uh, we were, would be able to put six more there, which would give us a total of 18 without impacting uh, the tennis. Uh, and I know there's a, a, a huge demand uh, for, for that. I'm, I'm not interested in building a, uh, a pickleball facility covered for tournaments. I'm looking for something for our recreation, for our own community to be playing. And looking at uh, a, um, an article uh, just recently where Palm Beach County is opening up three indoor pickle facilities uh, for pickleball it, it, uh, it, it, what looks like a reasonable uh, you know, item to play. Uh, and they're saying in here, no authorized tournaments, uh, league pay, play or paid services permitted. Not a bad idea uh, and I, I just, I'm, I'm looking at all of the uh, uh, pickleball facilities that are around, the ones that we're building in Ocean uh, Breeze, uh, to me, is going to be an indoor facility that can accommodate uh, a, a lot of these rainy days that we're having. Uh, I, I just am hesitant to support the covered uh, facility, knowing where our dollars are, the fact that uh, we're we're stretched for revenue and, and building out, we don't know what it's, it's going to cost us to build out uh, the east side, the hills. Um, we don't know what we're going to, to do with the um, west side of ocean uh, ocean breeze. Uh, we do know that we uh, are are starting to have limitations on our resources uh, that we have, uh, and I, I'm I'm going to be more in support of a uh, uh, a field house at Patch Reef than I would be the covered pickleball course. I, I know there's a, that's not a popular uh, idea, but if we were to build another six more uh, courts, outdoor courts at Patch Reef, that'd give us a total of 18 pickleball courts. And if anything, I'd like to uh, you know, consider deferring uh, anything until we see what Butters is going to be doing over there with their project. With uh, building out another uh, six uh, pickleball courts, giving us 18, those could be ready to go by March. Uh, this project is probably going to take another uh, year, year and a half, or uh, even Craig mentioned that it could be two years before we could be out there. So in, in the meantime, uh, uh, 
once we uh, decide what the uh, the activity is going to be with these facilities, we could go forward with this covered facility if need to. But I think um, I, I'm, I see the need, given what our uh, community uh, is stressed for, is even the, the utilization that some of the schools has been cut back, uh, some of the, where we have interloc agreements. And I, I'm, I'm so going to be supporting um, a, a different uh, motion. Uh, I, I won't support Craig's motion uh, uh, at all because I feel like that we need to consider other recreational. We, we have, we have listened to the pickleball uh, community. We've done what uh, we told we would do with the pickleball community. It's the same thing that uh, you know we had with lacrosse. We were dealing with that for a long time but we didn't have the resources to do patch free uh, uh, into the sports turf that everybody wants. And I, I feel like that uh, with the limitations that we have on our recreational uh, activities uh, for indoor sports, that we need that uh, 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 more than we do a covered pickleball facility. Um, so that's where I'm headed. Just a couple of things. Um just based on what you said as in response as a pickleball player um, and as a mom of two with like three jobs, it is really hard to go play at a place that's like 30 minutes or 40 minutes away, like the county places that you mentioned. It's, it's hard to even go 15 minutes away <laughs> to El Rio um, sometimes. So that can be an issue for some people to go having to travel a half an hour to go play. Um, and the other thing about you said uh, with the Butters group, um, if it's going to cost 30 or $40 to go play indoor pickleball, I won't be able to pay 30 or $40 to go play for an hour or two for in indoor pickleball. Um, so those are just two issues that might be an issue for some people. And having a facility that's a little closer to home that where you don't have to wait for a game for a half an hour when you only have a half an hour to play <laughs> um, would be a really great thing. And I'm not saying that um, we have to move forward th with this tonight because there are things to evaluate and things to look at. Um, and such as like if we did another six and we had you know, more at Patrice, is that something would, we would be able to look at to cover? Like at least the 12 in the back, would we be able to cover those in any way? Um, because having covered courts will make a huge difference for people. I can play at one o'clock in August, but most pickleball players can't play at one o'clock in August, but you can, if you have covered courts and you're not, you don't have the sun on you. Right. So it, there are a lot of things to look at. So if we could evaluate maybe it to just to, just to see if that, like a, if we could cover the, some courts in some way at Patry. Um, I'm not saying that I don't agree with this, but I'm just saying some more discussion on it or some more options might be available that we could look at um, before we table this at all or completely. I'm just trying to, you know, <laughs> come up with some more ideas, have some more discussion on it, and just give you a point of view that maybe you're not looking at in terms of some of the pickleball players and some of the um, – impediments that they might have in terms of going far away to play or having the money to play at an indoor facility like Diadem or where the Butters group is building. So things like that can have an impact on players just as a, as a reference. And, and I don't, I don't disagree with what you, what you're saying, uh, uh, Aaron, a lot of the communities around here, the gated communities are putting in pickleball facilities, uh, out, outdoor pickleball. So I know there's, there is more and more options for pickleball uh, players. Uh, if, if we uh, built a, a, a gymnasium, uh, you can put six, uh, how many pickleball courts do we get at uh, Sugar Sand Park, uh, Brian? Six when it's all open. Okay, so you get six right there uh, that uh, would be available to uh, pickleball as well as um, you know other folks that might want to uh, recreate other other community recreational needs and there are a lot of those um, you know I, I i get it if 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 there if there was a perfect world and there was nothing else uh, 
that we needed, uh, I would be perfectly happy with this. But there are other recreational needs that we need, and uh, I, I'm all about recreation for the, the community. Uh, with uh, uh, Patch Reef, uh, unfortunately, when this project was developed, we have a, an agreement with the county that says that uh, anybody that, because of their donation uh, to the uh, construction of Patch Reef, that any resident uh, of the county would be considered a resident of Boca. So we can't even charge non-resident fees at Patch Reef for uh, anybody playing there that lives in the county. To me, that's a, that's, that's a negative uh, to me when it terms of uh, uh, revenue generation. And, and there, we're not going to make enough revenue off of this to uh, uh, c probably cover our expenses. Um, I don't know where we're going to going to be when we starts talking about uh, someone to run the facility because the city hasn't given us a uh, an idea yet that they would be interested. Is that right, Brian? And to see if we build this and and how that would work. I think the city will run the facility, but um, we also had that RFP out for other building right. So. Right. Um, I mean, I, I would like to see the um, uh, the RFP is out. When is it due back? RFP for an operator we got back already. We had those. We had three responses to that. Did we? Okay. All right. Um, um, well, uh, that's that's my 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 feeling about this. I I, I know that there's um, a youth youth basketball program in town that's been uh, uh, that's had uh, one of their facilities uh, practically eliminated from their uh, their ability to use. And uh, I'm, I'm just concerned that as, 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 as the youth community grows and we need more indoor facilities that we, we don't have the indoor uh, field house that you know, can accommodate those needs. Um, so uh, I, I don't know whether you want to defer that or not, but that's just my, my opinion. I'm, I'm happy to take a vote on it. I mean, I don't want to defer it because I'm, we've already gone through this conversation. We did this in the fall. so. We came through the fall and we said after, and I understand it. Uh, we went through the whole pickleball scenario out at Patchery, out at the North Park area. What are they building? To me, these are different avenues. You know, one is for profit. One, is, this is purely for the public, and in never more than greater demand than today. Um, I know for our own community that does have uh, three pickleball courts, um, it's not ideal for residents to have a pickleball court in the middle of a, a neighborhood. So this, this where it's located at such a far away, it makes it more of an ideal scenario. And there is no question a need for covered uh, facility. And if you really, if pickleball goes away, you can turn it into covered tennis courts too. So the whole thing is designed to be somewhat multi-purpose if you needed to, but it's really designed as a pickleball center. And so I, I'm, you know, Raul has come here numerous times we put in the, the lighted courts out there. Those did spectacular. The demand, bless you, the demand is still there and it's always gonna remain there. It's not going anywhere. We've already made this decision. This is where we're at. Now we're kind of second guessing ourselves to say, oh, we wanna do something else. Um, look, I, I'm just trying to say, don't take on the whole park doing a, t reconstructing a whole tennis center. Leave that, do what we said we're gonna do, come back, if you want to rebuild the tennis center and put a, a, a field house over there where the tennis courts are or the, or the other courts, that's our opportunity to rethink the whole thing. Or do we want a, a field house at Patrick? Where should it go? We've never come to that kind of um, decision. That's a different animal. But now you've saved some money for that. And I'm all for going for and doing it now. Otherwise, you're going to have, you know, not four pickleball players, six pickleball players. You're going to have 100 over here come January and with good cause because we've told them we're building it. And then we said, no, we're not. Now we're saying we are. You know what? We need to get Raul here and all 200 or 300 people here so he can tell us that why are you not doing what we said we're going to do? So we're the ones doing what people are asking. We're the only ones in the recreation business here, Craig. And I think we need to consider the entire recreational community, not just one one segment. As I'm saying, if if we had the uh, the resources to do what we need to do, it'd be no problem. But I'm just thinking in terms of the resources. Now, uh, to, is, well, uh, um, I, I, I understand. Yeah, I, I understand. But what is it? What's coming down the future? 
And what's the cost to maintain this facility? I mean, there's still some unknowns here that we don't have answers to. So uh, uh, to uh, your motion, uh, the, the one thing that um, I, I uh, agree with is deferring the uh, tennis facility, uh, because I think you can't do both of these at the same time. I mean, that's just a, a, a huge project and it's going to result in, uh, you know, displacement for a lot of folks when you do that. So uh, if we if we did that, then we would certainly eliminate the, the ability for pickleball to be played there during that, and there'd be no place for these people to go. So that that was uh, support that part of your motion. Thank you. Oh, I mean, but the, the I guess I'm trying to go back to the heart of what you're saying. The heart of what you're saying is, I don't want to do pickleball now. I want to wait, and I want to work on a field house. And what I'm trying to say is, that ship has sailed. <laughs> we are working on this. Is a motion for building a pickleball center. I'm not interested in waiting till January, February, or March, or any other time. Time is short. We need to move forward with it and keep on going on this pickleball center because it's the right location. It was thought out, and that's what we're working on. That's what the motion is. Well, I it think also we have discussed a field house in North Park at some point. Um, we have discussed it's in the master plan for the west side, um, which is what we're planning for the future. And I think the most important thing right now is planning for the now and what people need right now. And right now, our constituents are asking for a pickleball, and that's what we went out for RFP for. Um, and a field house is gonna cost at least twice as much as this. Um, and I think that we have discussed with teaming up with people uh, on the west side uh, at North Park. We've discussed something possibly with the Y. We've discussed maybe possibly working with the city on something. Um, so I think we have to we have to think about the now. And yes, of course, we have to plan for the future, um, but we definitely have to plan for the now. And that's what people are asking for now. Um, and I agree with you that we shouldn't be the only municipality or any building pickleball courts. Um, but I also think that the city is not stepping up and we need to step up. Um, and they're coming to us and asking us to do it. And I agree with you. I think they also need to go to the city and ask for pickleball courts from the city as well, if that's what they want. Um, but we have gone through the process of picking the right site and picking and, and doing the process correctly. And I think this is something that we need to vote on tonight to see if we're going to do it. Because I agree with you. And so if, 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 we change the tennis courts to a field house later on, that could be a possibility as well. Um, but I think this is something that we need. We just need to make a decision. At this point. Okay. Uh, uh, let's uh, quit beating up on me and go, go ahead and uh, call the question. Uh, yeah, I just, now it's up to seven cents. Um, I, I, I agree with Craig. Um, we can play around a little bit with how many pickleball courts we're going to cover because I recognize that it's an expense to cover them. But the, the fact of the matter is, uh, for most people, it, between Memorial Day and roughly the 1st of October, uh, after 1 o'clock in the afternoon, those, those courts are not playable because it's too hot. There are some people, you know, there are masochists like our chair who will go out and, and play. Uh, uh, I get tired just thinking about pickleball. I don't have to play it. But point being, yeah, we've gone over this. And I also recognize the need for another field house that we've been talking about for an awful long time. But we got to we already have this budgeted. I think we need to move forward with what we're doing. We can, again, we can play around with, do we cover all the courts? Do we cover half the courts? Do we just cover three of them, four of them? I'm fine with that. But I think this is something we need to get off our plates. Run the numbers as far as um, maintenance and operation for and versus what the income will be. Well, we we I, I don't know what the income will be, but we projected. I mean, we make money on our our tennis facilities do well, especially this racket center here is one of our best performing facilities. Um, 
we estimate, I think the city put together something that would cost around 500000 with staff and maintenance and all that stuff. I mean, um, I don't know what the numbers will be, and I don't know what the programming will be, but I know there's plenty of opportunity for programming, and I know that pickleball is very hot right now. Um, it's um, trending, and I'm sure that they will capitalize on that and fill those courts up. I'm sorry, but to my esteemed colleague, Mr. Rollins, who I have the utmost respect for, um, I, I will say that this has all evolved. <coughs> We're all here because it evolved. And it was you, Mr. Rollins, who said racket facilities should be at racket facilities. Pickleball should be over there at the Patch Free Park. And I, I, I recall that day and I said, okay, that makes a lot of sense. And that's how we kind of evolved here. And then it evolved with, you know, it really should be covered because we were starting out with covered fields and, you know, covering the roller hockey. But then we realized, look, pickleball is where they want it covered. And so we're evolving more. I don't think it's bad that it's all a Patrick. I never thought we were going to make money on this project of, of catering to pickleball, but it's a constituent with such high demand. I don't see it going away for all ages. And we don't have this type of facility in uh, the area. And I'm, I'm hopeful that it is as, um, as free as possible. If that's a $5 a play, so be it. But never, never ever be a, a $30 play. I don't know how Boca Palo is going to evolve, whether it will evolve or not. But I do know it's taken us forever, it seems like, in my lifetime to get this far on this project. And that's why I don't want to delay it. I want, I, it, go, it took us so long to design it, to get it all there. Let's get this done. And then top of the list is a field house. Wherever that may be, that is, and I agree with you wholeheartedly, that field house needs to be added somewhere between the city and us somewhere. And I'd be welcome us working oh, maybe at uh, Countess to Hornley Park, building it there, or doing some major construction somewhere else to do that field house. But I agree that we do need it. And that should be our priority. And that may need some work with the new city manager and Brianne prioritizing things. I'm not going to do the tennis. We can set $1.6 million aside for the new field house. It's out of fun. Madam Chair, I apologize for speaking from my heart about this. <laughs> Uh, because, uh, well, I, I just see the recreational needs and, uh, and realize we really need to vet this. Um, and I, I agree with, I, I mean, I was the one that did suggest we put this facility at, uh, at Patch Reef. Um, uh, that was, uh, before I realized we had a, an issue with, uh, indoor space, uh, for our constituents and, and whatever, whether it's gymnastics, whether it's baton, whether it's but uh, the, the field has it, uh, Sugar Sand Park never rests. Uh, and uh, I think if we're uh, uh, building a, uh, a covered pickleball courts, we also should cover that inline uh, hockey rink over there that Craig has mentioned. Uh, we should be uh, putting cover on that. Uh, and that should be something that we should consider uh, in, in, the, in the future. So uh, at this point, I will um, call the question. I think we've had enough discussion. I, I... The motion is. Um, or he made the motion, right? Huh? Yeah, but yeah, just read the motion in just real quick to make sure we have the amount correct. So the motion would be to award the bid to CSR construction in the amount of $7,216,382 to construct a pickleball center, drainage of the tennis courts, and a parking lot expansion. Sound right? Yes. Okay. Roll call. Commissioner Ernst? Yes. Commissioner Engel? Commissioner Rollins? Commissioner Vogelsang? Commissioner Wright? Motion passes. Okay. Approval of payroll and invoices. Treasurer? Treasurer? <laughs> Um, we didn't discuss the, we didn't discuss the CRA payment, but that is included in this. I don't know how we should handle that, but wait, um, I can make a motion for payroll and invoices the amount of three million thirty one thousand one hundred seventeen dollars and eighty four cents, which includes a um, a payment to the CRA for the amount of two million five hundred thirteen thousand five seventy four. The ask the recommended amount. Asked amount, I guess, invoiced amount. Second. It's, 
I mean, just so everybody's clear, there is interlocal agreement aside, we are obligated by the Florida statute to fund the CRA for this amount. Even if that interlocal didn't exist, we would still be required to fund it. Um, we all, as a board, have always tried to figure out why did that interlocal come to be in 1986 because the statute required us regardless. I think that it was trying, it, they were trying to, you know, um, we were fighting it and it was going to go to court. Nobody really is clear on the full story, but um, at the end of the day, even if that ILA didn't exist, we would still be obligated to pay it in this amount um, because it's, it's. Um, do we have a second? Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Commissioner Ernst, Commissioner Ingle, Commissioner Rollins, Commissioner Vogelsang. Commissioner Wright? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, reports and discussion item. Commissioners, um, thank you all for tonight. It was a good discussion. Um, bids came in for the pillars at Sugar Sand Park, so we'll have that on an upcoming agenda. I'm not sure if we'll have them evaluated in time for January 2nd because it is the holidays. Um, so we'll see if we can get those done from WZA. Um, we have a joint meeting dates, uh, potential April 8th or April 22nd from the city. That's after the election. Um, they did not want to meet prior to the election. So if anybody has any opposition to either of those dates, if everybody's good, I'm just going to say we're good for either of those dates. Let us know which is best for the city council. April 8th or April 22nd. Those are the dates of city workshops. So the meeting, the joint meeting would take place at 6 p.m. Um, yes and yes. Okay. Um, I also wanted to ask tonight, we have two continuing services agreements out there with architect engineering firms. We have CGA and WZA under contract. We have a lot of work that we have going on. Um, and just to diversify, I wanted to ask the board to consider um, putting out an RFP to look for a third um, continuing services agreement with another architectural engineering firm. I'd like to bring that up in the next um, month uh, for consideration. So, yes. You know, April 22nd is the first day of Passover. Okay, so we'll just go with April 8th. Okay. And then I just wanted to wish everybody happy holidays and a safe, happy, and healthy new year. Thank you all. There are just a couple items I know, and I believe that Sam mentioned this at the last meeting, but just a quick reminder, at the beginning of the new year, there is a four-hour ethics training requirement for uh, district elected officials, which we will coordinate with your executive director and the five of you to ensure that that requirement is satisfied. And the other thing, which I believe Brianne might have brought to your attention uh, last week, um, we also follow a number of pending bills that have been filed up in the legislature. And there's one in particular that sparked some interest among special districts. It's referenced as PBC 2402. It's been filed. It's gone through two committees. It does a number of things as it relates to special districts. Uh, two particular items of note. One, it imposes term limits for district elected officials of 12 years, three, four-year terms, unless a district charter requires or provides for something uh, more restrictive. The other item of note in there is that it provides for and requires a referendum for all uh, districts that have the authority to levy a tax, to levy an ad valorem tax. A, rev a referendum needs to occur every 10 years to confirm whether or not the uh, voters residing in that district seek to have the district continue with its existence. Um, so it's it's a pretty interesting bill. The um, statewide association of special districts is watching the bill, as are a number of other um, lobbying and interested agencies. We're paying attention. We'll keep you all posted as it moves through the legislative process. But that is all I have this evening. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thanks, commissioners. Steve. Go ahead. Uh, earlier this week, well, last week, actually, you can't get much earlier than today, than this week, um, I had the opportunity to have lunch with uh, Marty Haber, who's the uh, president of the uh, JCC <coughs> in Boca. And it was a very productive luncheon. Uh, we discussed a couple of, the th couple of things, uh, one in particular for North Park which would be uh, uh, putting a senior center at the uh, old hotel site. Um, we didn't get into particulars, you know, how it's going to be financed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, except for the fact that I told him that, uh, you know, financially the ball is in their court. Um, but I thought this would be 
uh, a very good use of the property because there is no senior center in that part of Boca that's open to everybody. There are assisted living facilities and uh, private facilities, but nothing that uh, is available to everyone. So just something for us to, for the members of the commission to think about. Uh, uh, he also mentioned being interested in uh, collaboration with the Y on different projects to be determined. Uh, but I thought it was a very interesting and productive meeting. And uh, there was stuff that we discussed that's well worth thinking about. Uh, other than that, I want to wish everyone uh, a, a very happy holiday season. Um, I hope the words on the Rotary a Peace Poll come to fruition. I know it's kind of like spitting into the wind, but nonetheless, um, you know, who knows? Maybe something, maybe we'll all win the lottery and we'll have, we can forget about everything else. But anyway, that's all I got. Um, just want to thank um, the district staff um, and the accomplishments letter. The email that Chuck sent out was particularly well, I thought it was beautiful, particularly my fellow commissioners, and what they valued, the gifts they received. I thought it was very, um, gave a good human touch to things. And um, But the accomplishments we as a group have done, uh, we may argue about different things, but we at the end, we come to a pretty good solution. We are definitely one of the most transparent groups that uh, – organized and how we do things for the greater good of the community and uh, it's a pleasure to, to work with all of you and thank you very much and Merry Christmas and Happy Hanukkah and belated and we'll go from there. Thank you. Thanks Craig. Uh, you know you're absolutely right. Uh, uh, one of the blessings that uh, I didn't put in the note was the fact that uh, the camaraderie that we have with our group um, you know uh, whether the vote is three, two, four, one, uh, or unanimous, uh, we're, we're all in it together, and we move forward. There's there's no animosity after a vote uh, because we all do what we think is right for the community, and uh, we don't always agree with those uh, subjects, as as some of those who are here regularly know. Um, and uh, I, as everyone else, I do wish everybody a Merry, Merry Christmas. You know, holidays are gone for you, uh, Steve, but uh, I trust they were pleasant. But to everyone, uh, Happy New Year. Let's get our projects uh, underway, and hopefully the permitting process uh, goes better than uh, it has in the in the past, uh, and we can get our projects. Uh, uh, and I'm happy with the CRC. We've used those folks before. They're on time, under budget, and those are the two words I like to hear about any of our projects. Um, the 22nd, I'm out of town also, which I'm, I'm glad that we've uh, picked uh, April the 8th for that. So uh, um, thank you. Chair, you have done an extraordinary job. And Mr. Ernst, you as well. I, I couldn't be happier uh, sitting here and enjoying hearing all your opinions. Like Bob says, we don't always agree, but we uh, we managed to get the work done with an excellent staff. And that includes you, Merv, and Chuck, and also Ryan, thank you. And of course, our district council, both you and Sam. Uh, Merry Christmas, belated happy Hanukkah to you, everyone who ce celebrated and a healthy new year. So on what everybody said, I'm not one for mushiness. So happy holidays. Um, and that's it. Thank you. To adjourn. Commissioner Engel, Commissioner Rollins, Commissioner Vogelsang, Commissioner Wright. Yes, we are adjourned. <laughs>